Last night, the cleaner, the best belt machine, Kenny Omega, made his much-awaited return to All Elite Wrestling, and in doing so, opened up a can of worms as it pertains to the next step in the storyline involving the Young Bucks, Jack Perry, Kazuchika Okada, the, the new elite taking over, hostile takeover of AEW. And amongst other things, Kenny Omega spoke about his illness. The reason why he had to take a step back, the reason why he has he was gone from AEW since October, November of last year. And again, I'm not going to get into any details of that because I don't know the extent of his illness, the extent of his injury, but I assume he's in a much better place right now, which is amazing, which is awesome, which is great for Kenny Omega because if not, he would not have been able to step into an AEW ring and take the damage that he took last night from the Bucks, from Perry, from Okada. But I will say this. This hostile takeover storyline, it appears that they're building towards All In in Wembley. Any sooner wouldn't make any sense because Omega stated that himself in the middle of that ring when he challenged Okada to yet another match in their long, long storied rivalry. One of the best rivalries of all time in New Japan Pro Wrestling history. And he said a couple of months meaning June, meaning July, after forbid, Forbidden Door. So again, heading into Wembley, it appears that we might get Stadium Stampede at Wembley, or we might get Blood and Guts at Wembley. And the storyline heading into that show, which in my opinion should now be considered AEW's biggest show of the year, their biggest show of the calendar, is of course Kenny Omega, who is also an EVP, coming back, eventually making his return, a surprise return, in this case, unannounced, hopefully, and rallying the troops, rallying the troops against this brand new version, this brand new edition of the Elite. And I get why the characters themselves don't want to refer to them to themselves as the new Elite, because it's kind of a cliché. But, for all intents and purposes, this elite is not the elite that started AEW. Now, if I had to make a guess, if I had to assume who's going to come in and join Kenny Omega and rally the troops and defend AEW's honor, defend Kenny Omega's honor himself, one obvious answer stick, sticks out. And, of course, that is another former member of the new elite, or another former former member of the Elite itself. And I'm not talking about the current undisputed WWE champion. He's not coming back to AEW possibly ever. I'm talking about Hangman Adam Page. Which again, just speaks to the fact that AEW doesn't really have that much of a distinction between baby faces and heels because Page pretty much played the heel role or a tweener role earlier in the year in that three-way feud with Joe and Swerve. But now, in my opinion, he's going to make his return because, once again, just like Kenny Omega, he was unceremoniously fired from the Elite by the Bucks. But Omega, he stated last last night, he has power. Hell, they, the Bucks stated that in the open of the show. If Tony Khan cannot perform his duties as CEO and president of AEW, the EVPs, take over, they all have ironclad contracts, which means the Bucks can't be fired, which means the Bucks run the show, but that also includes Kenny Omega. So we got Omega, we got Hangman Adam Page. Let's throw a, a curveball. Let's throw a fastball. The return of Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Why not? Why freaking not? And again, he's a babyface. Or at least he left on those terms. He's the crowd scumbag. They had a fantastic bout last year, Omega and MJF, for the world title. So there obviously is some sort of respect between the two because of that match. 
And hell, why not Will Ospreay? Why not make it a dream team? Will Ospreay, MJF, Hangman Adam Page, and Kenny Omega versus the Bucks, Jack Perry, and Kazuchika Okada. Again, that's that's a few that's a rivalry that's very interesting. Very lucrative for the hardcore wrestling fan base. Now all they have to do, now all AEW has to do is get the casual fan base into this rivalry. Give us a reason to care about this rivalry. And again, this is the just the initial part of the storyline. And again, they're trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit by showing that dumbass footage from all in last year, which made absolutely no sense. But again, they're trying to spit it into a storyline. And again, that's what you gotta do. That's all you can do. If you're gonna go ahead and make that stupid move, follow it up, and keep the continuity going. That's all I'm gonna say. But with that said, these are just the initial chapters. These are just the initial steps in this storyline. And we've got a long way to go. Hopefully a long way to go. Hopefully full of ups and downs. Hopefully full of emotion. Hopefully full, full of character twist, story twist, which is the basis for sports entertainment, pro wrestling, AEW. And again, AEW focuses more on the W than it does on the entertainment aspect, of course. We still need stories to bring people in. And this one has potential. I'm not going to lie. This one has potential if they make the right steps, if they take the right twists and turns needed to get the, the fans in. For now, I'm a little bit cautious, but yeah, excited. And again, this is coming from a pro wrestling fan, hardcore wrestling fan. I follow all this backstage stuff going on. They have to get the casual fan base on board. So with that said, what are your thoughts? What... What are your thoughts on what transpired last night on Dynamite? Can you make Omega make his return? The new elite attacking him, laying him out once again. Omega is on the shelf, but he will eventually make his return. And eventually we will get to a stable or a group of guys facing off against this brand new version of the new elite. Leave your thoughts, comments, and predictions in the comment section below. With that said, I'm Alexis Carrillo. This has been Wrestling Talk, and... I'll see you next time.